This is the world's most annoying tennis opponent, and this is a 4-5 player working really hard to try to beat him. And he did a lot of great things in this match. And in this video, we're gonna deconstruct his tactics and his strategies that worked well, and let you know exactly what you should copy back at home so that pushers, dinkers, lobbers, retrievers, whatever you wanna call them, you can start having more success against them. If you haven't already seen video one and video two in this series, watch them first. It's all about mindset and what not to do. This video is gonna focus exclusively on what patterns and tactics work the best. First and foremost, a big shout out to Tennis Troll channel here on YouTube for posting this match footage. Do me a favor, click the like button if you appreciate his vulnerability in posting these points on his channel for us to dive into and deconstruct. And it's been an incredible learning experience. And I wanna say thank you. This series has been amazing. So much engagement, so many comments. And honestly, something that I'm surprised that all of you watching really high tennis IQ. I love reading through the comments and I read all the comments by the way. But one tactical approach that I was surprised that many of you have not talked about yet is the drop shot. In fact, I've seen it brought up very, very rarely. And in this video, focusing on how to beat pushers, that's the first thing we're gonna focus on, is draw them into the net. When you play a defensive style opponent, what we talked about in the previous video is frequently they love the scramble game. They love running back and forth. In fact, very typically, they're great and very comfortable going side to side. Uh, you can hit this corner, then hit that corner and go back and forth. And they love sprinting back and forth. But often what they're not comfortable with is volleys up at the net. So if you can draw them forwards on purpose, a lot of times that can really work out in your favor. And Tennis Troll drop shotted him several times. I think he should have used it more based on a couple indicators. This is what you should be watching for at home. Watch the reaction from the defensive player. I'm gonna go ahead and, and zoom in on the pusher. Whoops, that didn't work. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on the pusher. Watch his response when I click play here. Watch when the drop shot comes. And there's kind of like, a, did you catch it? There's like a quick little like, whoop. Like he didn't read it even though Tennis Troll didn't necessarily, I don't think, try to disguise this drop shot, but you see him closing forwards, you see the wide open racket face, and he starts coming down very steeply at this shot. His racket face very open. And the response from the defensive player doesn't come until well after the shot is hit. And he actually kind of like goes back on his heels and then starts going forwards. Really inefficient movement. And so the fact that it wasn't disguised particularly well and it was kind of like a, a slow and kind of awkward response to me when I see this as an opponent I'm thinking oh man I'm gonna just abuse this and make sure that I can go to the well with a drop shot as much as possible and he didn't really move to the ball particularly quickly and just didn't look very comfortable and in the highlights video that troll posted I didn't really see more than one or two points that got closed out at the net by the defensive player. So this is thing number one to look for. Generally, defensive players love the baseline. They love being a track star and running back and forth, but up and back is frequently not as comfortable. Let's look at another example of this. Watch this drop shot from Tennis Troll, who's on the, the near side here. We've got a little bit of kind of a, a backspin exchange. Then here's the drop shot. Now watch the defensive player after he comes in. What just happened there? He went to a lot of trouble to close forwards and retrieve that drop shot. That's right here. And again, and again from uh, Tennis Troll, um, not a particularly good drop shot. It was okay, but I mean, it just lands just inside the service line. Not especially strong. Uh, one before was, was a much higher quality shot, the one that bounced twice. But this one, watch the defensive player close in, hit this shot, which was a decent shot, and then watch what he does as Tennis Troll goes for the ball. He just kind of like wanders around in the middle of the court, stays behind the service line, and then when Tennis Troll hits this shot, instead of closing forwards, instead of closing forwards at an angle to cut the ball off, he actually turns around and runs back and tries to like catch up with the ball. And this, the first time I saw this, uh, it, rather if I saw this playing against a defensive player, I would be forcing them to close forwards all day because this to me is a strong indication that he's not comfortable at the net. 
For me, after receiving that ball, I'm in like all in, like close the net mode. And this is the opposite of that. This is a really kind of uncomfortable looking response to that short ball. So another example here, and something that I think tennis trolls should have utilized more frequently, is this drop shot. Make him try to close points out with a volley. Because based on that response, I don't think that's where he wants to be. The second big theme we're gonna look at here is safe patterns with strong swings. Offensive, really solid swings, but safe patterns. I'll go ahead and let you watch this point. I think Tennis Troll did a, a fantastic job with the patterns in this point. Initially, the defensive player actually got off on the upper hand here, and he was kind of in control of the point. But then Tennis Troll turned it around, and we're gonna deconstruct his shot selections here because I think it's so important and just a really excellent example. So after the, the point gets started, and after the return of serve, that tennis troll just kind of blocks back. He gets in a little bit of trouble here. He chooses to hit a high, deep, heavy topspin shot cross court, which is excellent for several reasons. First of all, he hits himself into position. His recovery position is on the same side of the court that he started on. It's high percentage because he's going cross court. There's more space to hit to, lower net, et cetera, et cetera. But the heavy topspin, really kind of neutralizes this defensive player. And whatever he hits back next, it's not gonna be heavy, you know, aggressive swing, topspin back. He's gonna come up with something that's probably at least a little bit awkward because generally players with unconventional technique like this can't send that same type of ball back. So he kind of bunts something back short and what really tennis stroll does an excellent job of here is just maintaining high percentage patterns. He receives the backhand after tennis stroll just kind of chopped it down the line and he goes cross court again. And that's really smart because this player didn't account for the position. He hits down the line and just barely recovers to the middle of the court. That leaves tennis troll a big opportunity cross court. So when he hits a nice heavy topspin, aggressively hit shot cross court, he makes more running for that defensive player, which is outstanding. Then when that player just kind of floats the ball back, Instead of going for the sucker play and trying to laser it down the line, he just sticks to the pattern. And so he goes heavy again, cross court, really aggressive, top spin, excellent angle on this shot. Now he's really got the upper hand in the point. And when the defensive player hits the ball back, he actually ends up hitting a solid shot. It'd be tempting again to go down the line, but I love that tennis troll just maintains that attack cross court and now he's just really got this player crossed up. So could he have gone down the line on that shot? Probably, maybe he didn't feel super comfortable because he actually got stretched out a little bit, I don't know. But I just love the fact that he maintains solid, strong, confident swings on a safe pattern and he ends up crossing up his opponent and now he's got a forehand just sitting in the very middle of the court. <laughs> sitting in the middle of the court, and now he can do whatever he wants with that shot. And he's got an open chunk of court on that inside in ball. And so that's the one he finally ends up changing direction with. And so here, look at the winner that he hits with this shot. This is a winning ball that's six or seven feet inside the sideline, and probably a solid three or four feet inside the baseline. Those are the winners that we wanna hit against a defensive player. We do not wanna feel like we have to hit a winning shot that lands right here. And that's the pattern that we were looking at in the previous video, going for low percentage shots and hitting like the incredible winner, but you can't sustain that over the course of a two or three set match. This is how you wanna set your points up against a defensive player so that you can hit winners to big targets instead of hitting winners to small targets. Here's another example of really strong, solid shots hit the safe targets on really safe patterns. I'll go ahead and play the point through so you can get a feel for it first. We've got a safe return to serve, and I want you to see the heavy topspin shot. Yes, it's down the line, but he played it really, really smart. And then that cross court heavy topspin ball really pulls that defensive player off the court. And again, just opens up a wide open chunk of court to hit a winner to. So let's deconstruct that really quick. Um, just really safe, neutral, you know, just middle of the court, return to serve just to get the point started. And then when the defensive player goes down the line to the backhand, something that uh, Tennis Troll, I think you did really nicely, at least in the highlight points that I watched, is you're doing a good job of kind of isolating the, the backhand, which 
was the weaker side for the defensive player. And so I like this down the line shot because it's high over the net, heavy top spin, lots of safety inside both lines. This is how you want to change direction. This is how you want to go for the low percentage target is with nice big margins. But that top spin that he's hitting is also coming off the court really aggressively. And by the way, those of you down in the comments who are saying, oh, this is like patty cake tennis or stop showing us these like low level points. Both of these players, both players win a lot at four or five. Four or five is the top 10% of amateur tennis players, meaning not non-professional tennis players. This is not low level tennis. If you think this is slow, that ball that Troll Tennis just hit down the line, then you've probably never seen yourself play on video before because you don't know what you're watching if you think that's like a patty cake, like slow topspin shot. And this shot in particular, this cross court forehand, again, lots of height, there's a lot of spin on this, and it's also landing pretty close to the line, not much margin here, but I love the, the pattern, I love the cross court target, and now we're going to the weakness on a high percentage pattern, high and a lot of top spin. That means the ball is bouncing up high in the strike zone of this defensive player, and it's just not gonna be possible for him with his unconventional technique to hit anything strong or solid back. And so when that ball comes back, just floating, sitting in the middle of the courts, tennis troll is there to hit cross courts away from his opponent and hit it really solidly. Not a ton of margin here, but that's fine. I mean, it's an easy, you know, sitting ball, so I don't mind him aiming a little bit closer to the line on that shot. A really good setup. High percentage, strong shots, heavy top spin, isolating the weakness, and then going to the open court. Really smart tactics against a defensive player. If you like what you're seeing and you're serious about improving your game, I highly recommend you go to EssentialTennisAcademy.com. This is the inside of the members area and within Academy, there's all these different categories of coaching, tons of different lesson modules that cover every part of the game. And you can check it out for free right now at EssentialTennisAcademy.com. The third theme we're gonna look at is approaching the net effectively, coming forwards, something that we looked at several examples in part two of this series about tennis troll not coming in very effectively and getting passed by this defensive player who has excellent passing shots, by the way, really incredible offensive weapons that not all pushers have. But I want you to watch when he gets the short ball in a moment here, how he comes forwards and targets down the line and has really excellent depth on this approach. And so what that does is two things. First of all, when the approach shot goes down the line, I mentioned hitting himself into position on the baseline previously, where he kept the ball cross courts, and so it results in less running. When you come up to the net, everything is flipped. When you approach down the line, you hit yourself into position. And so he didn't get to a fantastic position here, tennis troll, but at least he hit it down the line. Had he went cross courts, then his positioning to be ready for the next shot would have been all the way on the other side of the courts because he hit down the line, and here's the passing shot being hit right here, an ideal position for him would have been somewhere right about here. So is he in perfect position? No, but at least he's on the correct side of the courts. And you know, is there court exposed? Yes, but look at how deep this shot lands. It's landing just inside the baseline, and this player with kind of a short, punchy shot, taking the ball right off the bounce, really tall order to hit a passing shot off of that ball. So between the positioning and the depth and the strength of the shot, this is how you're gonna win when you come up to the net against a defensive player. If you don't do those two things, then you're gonna leave yourself exposed. And even if you make him run a lot, if it's not really deep and well struck, he loves to scramble. He loves to be the track star and run back and forth. He loves chasing down shots and trying to hit passing shots or lobs. He lobbed a lot in the highlights that you saw from Tennis Troll. So you have to make coming to the net a very short project. You've gotta make it a very short errand. If you let it draw out and it gets into like scramble mode, that really dramatically benefits the defensive player. So really nice job here from Tennis Troll taking care of business by putting himself in a position with the approach and then being able to cross and cut off the volley and put it away right away. If this analysis breakdown has been helpful, do me a favor, click the like button. It helps me and it helps the channel, it helps us reach more players. 
who need coaching like this. Our passion is to help players improve their game. So clicking the like button really helps us do that. I really appreciate it. One more look here at an approach. This time you're gonna see him break that positioning rule and go cross court, but he does it with a strong enough shot that he just finishes the point. And this is the contrast between what we looked at in video two, where we looked at some of the passing shots, he would approach cross court, but not with anything super special. Maybe the defensive player would have to move a step or two, but not much more than that. Here he's going cross court and really taking a nice aggressive swing at the ball, heavy topspin and just hitting a winner. And so, yeah, maybe, maybe you might be saying to yourself, yeah, sure, Ian, just pick a winner you know, shot. Like that's how you're supposed to beat a pusher. But I'm just trying to make the point here that if you're going to approach, and in particular, if you're not gonna follow the pattern and hit yourself into position, you'd better just hit a winner. It'd better be a really aggressive swing and you'd better hit something that you're relatively confident is gonna just outright win you the points. Otherwise, you get right back on the scramble train and that immediately benefits that defensive player. So the three themes that we looked at today were draw them forwards, high percentage patterns with aggressive swings, and approach the net with authority, with confidence. Make sure you position yourself well, or if you're not gonna hit yourself in a position, at least hit a really confident, solid shot, like we saw in that last one. Roll those things together, avoid the mental traps that we talked about in video one, avoid the tactical mistakes that we talked about in video two. If you put all three of these videos together and implement what you learned, you will be more successful against defensive players. I absolutely guarantee it. So if you appreciate that, do me a favor, click the like button, be sure you subscribe as well. We've got so much more planned very soon coming out here on the Essential Tennis YouTube channel. Thank you for all your engagement down in the comments. I appreciate that as well. And I'll catch you in the next video.